an unmanned aircraft landing autonomously on an aircraft carrier at sea, the most significant aviation event of the century so far, let alone of 2013. The U.S. Navy's Northrop Grumman X-47B unmanned combat air system demonstrators made history with arrested landings and catapult launches from the carriers Truman and Roosevelt. The feat paves the way for the Navy's U-Class program to field a limited number of surveillance strike UAVs on carrier decks by the end of the decade. Combat operations continue to drive UAV development. Unmanned resupply of remote bases in Afghanistan suffered a setback when one of two Lockheed Martin Cayman K-Maxes crashed. But the other is back flying, and the U.S. Marine Corps wants to turn the demo into a permanent capability. Northrop, meanwhile, began flying the Extended Endurance MQ-8C Fire Scout unmanned helicopter based on the Bell 407 to provide long-range surveillance from ships in support of special operation units in Africa. Northrop's Global Hawk franchise had a mixed year. The Navy's MQ-4C Triton variant began flying, but Germany killed the Eurohawk program citing its inability to fly in civil airspace, and the U.S. Air Force is cutting back on Global Hawk procurement. Development of UAVs with even longer endurance than the Global Hawk continues, but demand is uncertain. In 2013, Boeing continued to test fly the hydrogen-fueled Phantom Eye, and Aurora Flight Sciences diesel-powered Orion made its first flight, with five days aloft as the ultimate goal. Seriously lagging the U.S. in unmanned aircraft development, Europe made some progress in 2013, with BAE systems flying the secrecy-shrouded Tyrannus, and a Dassault-led consortium resuming flights of the Neuron, both UCAV demonstrators while Italy's Piaggio Aero began flying the demonstrator for its Avanti-based Hammerhead UAV. In December, Aviation Week exclusively unveiled the existence of Northrop Grumman's RQ-180 UAS, which is already flying in the Nevada desert.